welcome back. So I've got something a little different today. Um, the other day I was uh, <clears throat> scrolling through LinkedIn and uh, I make sure if you have a LinkedIn, go and find me. I'll put the link in the description. Go and uh, give me a follow there. Let's, let's tag up there. But I found this really interesting story about adding, about knowing your value <clears throat> and whether you add value to a company or to your environment and and then also the environment that you're in matters immensely so i'm going to read this quick article please bear with me stay to the end of the article and i'll explain why it makes sense <clears throat> this is from uh, a linkedin profile his name is brian weber he is the director of talent acquisition at ahead a h e a d so oh, he writes, a, a violinist played for 45 minutes in the New York subway. A handful of people stood, a handful of people stopped, a couple clapped, and the violinist raised about $30 in tips. No one knew this, but the violinist was Joshua Bell, one of the best musicians in the world. In that subway, Joshua played one of the most intricate pieces ever written with a violin worth $3.5 million in the New York subway, just standing there. Two days before he had he played in the subway, Joshua Bell, sorry, got a message. Two days before he played in the subway, Joshua Bell sold out the Boston theater. Seats averaged $100 but sold out the whole thing. The, the experiment proved that an extraordinary, that the extraordinary in an ordinary environment does not shine and is so often overlooked and undervalued. There are brilliantly talented people everywhere who aren't receiving the recognition and reward they deserve. But once they arm themselves with the value and confidence and remove themselves from an environment that isn't serving them, they thrive and grow. Go where you are appreciated and valued. Know your worth. <clears throat> now, that story blew me away. And it's actually a lesson that I learned a while ago but it, it took me a lot longer to learn it than I wish it had. So I'm making this video today because I want to try to pass that lesson along and that knowledge along to as many people as possible. Is knowing your value and knowing when you're in an environment that doesn't value your skills, right? So another example would be if you're a shark swimming in the ocean, you're one of the deadliest predators in the ocean, right? If you took that shark up and dropped them in the woods somewhere, just on the side of a mountain, those skills are not valued. They're not even applicable. He's going to die in a matter of minutes, right? But in the right environment, that shark is one of the deadliest predators in the ocean, in the right environment. And so really the lesson I want people to, to take away is, Know when your current situation, whether it's a relationship or a job, and I'm speaking mostly in, in a job sense, um, because that I think is one of the biggest environments that doesn't value people, that devalues people, is your job. <clears throat> um, I think people don't realize that, this is a, a probably an unpopular opinion, but most jobs, most companies don't care about you they do not care you could leave the job or pass away and in two or three days they would have someone filling your position and it doesn't even matter if you're the ceo on down they most most not all most do not care about you and it took me a long time to realize that um, so right now i'm talking to employees you need to go to companies that value your skills and even if they they might not value your skills right now maybe you need to show them 
how your skills are valuable to them in an immense way, in a way that is plain for them to see is, is a no brainer for them to be like, holy cow, where has this person been my whole life? <clears throat> we need to hire him right, him or her right now. Um, and then also I'm going to talk to CEOs and managers right now. And I've had some terrible managers over the years and it took me a long time. I always, it always frustrated me because I would have, you'd have different bosses. You'd have to prove yourself again, or you didn't get along with that boss. And it really affected how much money you made, even though you were a good employee it was a mess, right? So I'm talking to the good CEOs and the good bosses right now. You need to protect your environment, right? If you're a CEO and you built this environment of actually caring about people, you need to be that, you know, that, that lion or lioness that's protecting your pride, you know, fiercely, just immensely. You need to protect your environment, like to the, to the best of your ability. Right. And so I think a lot of times CEOs will preach the big, Oh yeah, we, we care about everyone and we're all one big happy family and blah, blah, blah. And they say that all the time and it's just lip service. It's never actually true. They don't actually care about it. Right. So if you're one of the CEOs or one of the supervisors or someone that does care about your environment and by your environment, I mean the people you employ and the people around you, if you do care about them, you need to protect it fiercely because what's going to happen is people are going to start to know their value and they're going to go on to another team or another company or start their own thing, whatever it is. So if you don't value that person and by valuing them, you're protecting your environment as a CEO, you don't do that. They're going to leave. Right. And I think, a lot of now I'm, I'm going to talk to employees now for a little bit. I think a lot of employees don't understand how much power they have. You can always leave. I was a mechanic for a long, long time. And the one thing that uh, I did realize there that I did learn from being a mechanic is, you know, the, the boss, sometimes you have shitty service managers or something. They'd be like, yeah, yeah, you could, we could kick you out of here tomorrow. That's why your toolbox is on wheels, you know, for a reason. And, you know, I thought about it one day and I flipped it. I was like, you know what? My toolbox is on wheels for a reason. You're right. I could leave at any time I want to on my terms. I could go to a, a place that values me and not, I don't care about, you know, I'm not worried about you kicking me out because I know my services are valuable. My skills are valuable and my work ethic is valuable. So you're right. My toolbox is on wheels and even better. If you don't work at a place that has a toolbox, like I don't anymore, I make my, my living, you know, with a computer now it's even easier. Right? So I just wanted to get that off my chest. I appreciate you sticking around to the end here. I know this is a little bit uh, of a long winded, um, way of saying know your value and don't let anyone take that away or diminish or don't let them trick you into thinking that you're low value. And <clears throat> the best way to do that is to find the environment you're going to thrive in, right? It may, it may be a physical environment, maybe the state you live in, maybe it's, you know, a city within a state you live in, or maybe it's just the company you work for, right? And maybe that just changing that environment to a different company down the road, but you got to find the environment you're going to thrive in and you have to know and be able to explain why your skills are that valuable. All right, guys, that's all I got for today. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you, if you think someone else will get value out of this, please share it to them, spread the word on this message. I want as many people to hear this as possible because I think it's extremely powerful, especially in today's tough economy and tough job market. All right, guys, stay safe.